Senator Romney. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, uh, I recall during the years of the last administration, uh, particularly before the COVID crisis occurred, that there was uh, a, a period of great, robust um, economic growth. And despite that, we were generating nearly a trillion dollars a year in deficits, which, of course, added to the debt. Um, I get a, 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 a text every morning that tells me what the debt is today. Uh, and today, it, or actually yesterday, it went over $28 trillion in, in national debt. Uh, there was a member of the last administration, I, I, maybe I'm paraphrasing, but basically he said debt is good. When, when asked, hey, are you concerned about all this debt and the trillion dollar deficits, he said, no, debt's good. D do you believe debt is good at the level we have and at the level we keep adding to it even during good years? Um, Senator, I, I would use a different word. I, uh, not not good, but okay. I think there are. It's manageable. Um, I, I would never say debt is good, but I think it is okay with the current other with interest rates being as low as they are, um, and the tools the Fed has. I think we are we remain thankfully in a good place um, to continue to combat the pandemic uh, the way we have. Yeah, I'm not talking about the pandemic necessarily. I'm talking about the, the annual deficits we run of roughly a trillion dollars. The challenge is, yes, in, interest rates are low now, but if interest rates go up and we still have the debt, we got to pay the interest. So last year we spent $390 billion in interest. If interest rates go back to their normal level, we'll spend a trillion dollars a year in interest, which would overwhelm uh, our, our, our federal budget. Um, I, I'm concerned in the COVID relief plan that the uh, President, by the way, I, I fully support helping people that need help, helping states and, and businesses that need help. I'm concerned that in the current plan, there's a lot of excess that is that is going to just add to the debt without creating a benefit to our economy or helping people that are in need. I, I'm concerned, for instance, that under the plan, many states that had no revenue loss or no deficit as a result of uh, uh, COVID and no unreimbursed COVID expenses, that they nonetheless are going to get billions and billions of dollars. I see that as a problem. Do you, do you feel that's a problem as well? Uh, Senator, I've always looked at, and I, I, I've worked on the Coronavirus Relief Fund. Um, we did $160 billion in bipartisan CARES bill. That money ran out in December. I've, I've always looked at that fund as not just a revenue loss fund, uh, but one that is to, meant to and designed to provide fiscal relief. So those states who are doing uh, increased vaccine distribution uh, they have increased costs. They, this fund is also to ensure that they provide needed services. So I, I, I've looked beyond revenue losses. Uh, one of the oh, oh, of course. Uh, so I, what I'm saying is if a state had no net revenue loss, we had 21 states that had, revenue has gone up every year, even during the pandemic. 21 revenues have gone up. And we have reimbursed all their excess COVID expenses. And we raised the FMAP so we provided greater support for their Medicaid. So these are states that are in fine financial shape. California, for instance, I, I understand their, their budget uh, surplus this year is roughly $20 billion. And yet under the president's plan, we anticipating giving California another $27 billion. Uh, that, that, uh, that doesn't make sense to me. Is this, does this make sense to you? Uh, yes, sir. If you uh, consider the the you know the the regular budget did not account for a pandemic, so if we want states to step in and do a lot of these COVID relief activities, well, but the, but all the COVID relief activities were reimbursed through the CARES Act, and anything not reimbursed is appropriately to be reimbursed. So I'm I'm saying if a, if a, if the federal government agrees to provide all the funding necessary to reimburse COVID expenses that a state has and it fills their budget gap from loss of revenue, I don't see a reason to give even more money to that state. I hope you'll look at that. I don't, I, I, I think it's- I'm happy to, sir. And we, uh, you know, we've certainly talked to, we talked about bipartisanship. Uh, this is one, uh, certainly some of the, the governors and, and locals um, of both parties um, have have given us uh, data that says they, they are, not just a need because of revenue loss, but because of the, the extra requirements um, for their citizens. Uh, I, I could assure you as a former governor, if the federal government is gonna be handing out billions of dollars, I'm gonna have my hand out to get as much as I can. But these are dollars that are gonna be paid for by our kids and our grandkids. They're being loaned to us by the Chinese among others. We ought to be really careful in what we send out. And what is being proposed under the president's plan 
is really not in line with what the actual results are that are being seen by states because states are continuing to receive revenue. They receive revenue from income tax, from property taxes at the, at the local level, of course, and, uh, and so states are not seeing the kind of uh, pain that, that some states are. The states that feel pain, got to help them. The states that don't feel pain, we shouldn't be sending them billions of dollars that we're borrowing uh, for our kids to have to pay back. On a different topic, on our trust funds, we got a lot of trust funds in trouble, as you know. The Highway Trust Fund runs out of money this year. Medicare's Hospital Insurance Trust Fund runs out in 2024. Social Security Disability Trust Fund 2026. Social Security Retirement uh, Fund in 2031. Um, in December, 71 senators voted for an amendment to the budget resolution on the importance of extending the solvency of these trust funds, one by one. It's specifically called for creating individual bipartisan, bicameral subcommittees to look at each one of those trust funds and find a bipartisan solution to get each one of those on a solvent basis. Is this effort one that you are willing to support and work with as we proceed? Uh, Senator, I think that's the only way we're going to find solutions is through a bipartisan one where Congress works together and the administration works in partnership. So you absolutely have my commitment uh, to support such an effort. Thank you. Mr. Miller, what consulting firm did you work with? Uh, the Boston Consulting Group. Oh, the Boston Consulting Group. I worked there once, too. Very fine group. Smart people. I hope you bring some of that skill and, and capability to the new assignment you have. Can you tell me precisely what are the responsibilities in the assignment you would receive? What, what, is, what are the, uh, the, uh, the key deliverables that you have in the assignment that you, that you were uh, looking to be confirmed to? Senator Romney, thank you for the question. Uh, as I understand it, the Deputy Director for Management, which was created in 1990 by the CFO Act, both to look at federal financial management at a time when it was quite poor across agencies, as well as look at a broad set of general management functions, is to play the central OMB role of ensuring that, one, agencies are delivering on their missions through clear and consistent policy and guidance on execution performance, that, two, we have the right policies in place working with OPM on the federal workforce, that we're looking at our technology systems, and the, uh, both from a cybersecurity standpoint and from a delivery standpoint, and that our procurement policy uh, is consistent with both mission uh, of the agencies as well as the broad set of uh, policy goals, such as supporting small, small and disadvantaged businesses, strengthening the American workforce through domestic preference requirements, and more broadly serving as one of the uh, leaders of OMB overall uh, to support all of OMB's broad missions. I look forward to hearing a report on your success in carrying out th those responsibilities. I, I also uh, solicit your involvement in our effort to uh, rein in the excesses uh, in government and, and particularly for us to tame the debt. As a guy who was once in the world of leveraged buyouts, I understand the value of debt and how you can use debt effectively, but I'm concerned that the amount of debt we're adding to the country, even during good times, puts us in peril down the road. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for your time.